Hello everyone. Today's video is the topic of 9 out of every 10 times as it applies to potential relationships between men and women. So one theme that I see expressed in certain circles is the idea that a man can still find the right woman, the supposed right woman, to have a successful long-term relationship of some form with if he looks in the right places. And traditional conservatives are the ones that especially seem to have this mindset of encouraging men to continue to look for the so-called right woman in the right places and to just find the one that's right for them, more or less, or to find a good woman, so to speak. It's mostly traditional conservatives that tend to say that based on what I've seen. And unfortunately, the fatal flaw with this argument, with this idea, is that the odds are so heavily against this happening that even if there's a small remaining chance that a long-term relationship or marriage could work, supposedly, in theory, for a man today, the chance is so low of finding someone that you can have a staple relationship with over time that it really doesn't make sense, in my opinion, for most men to even really want or try to pursue that. Maybe if, again, and I've talked about this as an exception, Stardusk has talked about this, although... I don't know if we have the exact same opinion on the issue, but basically, unless you feel like you have to get married and have kids, this is not a good idea for you as a man. Unless you can't form your identity without trying to be a husband and father, you're better off not making this choice. And this is the way that I look at it, guys. This is the way that I figure it. Around half of all marriages end in divorce, and many of the remaining half of marriages and in many of the remaining half of marriages that do last at the very least for a period of time, the woman will take advantage of her greater authority in that marriage structure, in the system as it is today, in most cases. Literally, of the marriages that don't end in divorce, in over half of the remaining marriages, the woman's basically abusing her position because she knows that she can. And the man becomes a miserable doormat in the relationship as a result in the majority of marriages that continue to last over a period of time. We see this all the time in terms of expected gender roles, lifestyle choices, and parenting decisions where the woman knows that she's in control. She can basically do what she wants. She can probably, even in many cases, cheat on her husband, and either she can still divorce him and take half of his stuff, or if it doesn't end in divorce, he has to continue to basically be in that situation. So the woman has the power, right? Gender roles in terms of, I'm not going to do anything around the house, but you're still going to do what has been traditionally the male role. You need to be a provider, but you have to do 50% of everything else around the house too. Women know that they can take advantage of the system. And I'm not going to get into how biased the system is too much here, but Basically, they know that they have a structure, a power structure, and a culture that supports them almost no matter what they do within the marriage. If she wants an open marriage, so to speak, she can use that to justify cheating on the husband pretty much. And he can either divorce her and let her take the kids or not and stay in that situation. And then it's a quote-unquote successful marriage because they stay together, right? That's the problem is Half of marriages end in divorce, and then you have the majority of other marriages that may not be as extreme as the examples that I've described here in terms of like literal cheating and whatnot, although it definitely can involve that, but the woman has the power and the authority, and she ultimately knows in most cases that she can use that against the man so that if he does fall out of line, then she can divorce him. And so that encourages the marriage to work, so to speak, but it's actually a totally dysfunctional marriage. And that's the next point that I want to get to, is that you must also take into account that a lot of long-term relationships seem to work on the surface, but they're actually fraught with conflict and are miserable for either both parties or especially for you as the guy. Then there are relationships that are flat-out abusive as well, where the man is either forced to stay in that relationship or bide his time hoping that it'll improve somehow due to lacking any other options, basically choosing the least worst option in that situation once you've committed to that woman, once you've had kids with her, 
once you're married or once you live with her, especially with marriage and children, but even just living with her, now she has the power of the domestic violence laws being on her side. So all of these factors basically are not good for you as the man in that situation. And so I think it can be pretty confidently said, especially, again, I look at so many men in the manosphere who have talked about their personal situations. I look at relationships in real life as well. I think it can be confidently said that nine out of every 10 relationships that last for a period of time, that involves some level of commitment from the guy, fail from the guy's perspective, with the man usually paying the greater price for that failure in nearly all of those cases. So again, even if you can argue that there is a small percentage of chance that a long-term relationship will not end with the woman making you miserable, it won't end with her having nearly all the power and control that she abuses in the relationship or end in divorce, which happens in half of all cases, basically. And we know that the woman files for divorce in the majority of those cases. As a result, even though one could argue that a successful relationship is still technically possible in this modern societal dynamic that we have, the odds against maintaining this over time are so extreme that they make very little practical sense from the self-aware man's perspective, from the point of view of a guy that realizes that most relationships fail, and even if they continue to exist, they're often so one-sided in favor of the woman at the man's expense to where the man is not getting any sort of sexual fulfillment, the woman's not performing any sort of gender roles, but she still expects him to make a certain amount of money, or she'll leave, or they're flat out abusive, or she's basically using the kids against him in some form. There are so many different examples of this that there are just very few relationships that can earnestly be called successful from the man's perspective. And so in my opinion, most men are better off not taking these risks given the stark odds and the true risk-benefit assessment involved. It's just not really a very promising perspective, right? It's not a very advantageous deal at all because the chance of maintaining that over time, especially if you commit to her in a marriage or by having children or by moving in with her or letting her move in with you, the chance of maintaining any sort of real level of positive experience is so low because there are so many things against it that you just basically continue to look at relationships for what they are today and you look at the chance of, all right, she's not divorcing me. She's not having these one-sided expectations. She's not going to be abusive to me because she knows that she can get away with it. She's not going to decide that, oh, I want to go ahead and have an open marriage now so that I can fuck other men because I can get away with that because society doesn't put the brakes on that whatsoever. And what's he going to do, divorce me? and I get to take half his stuff anyway, like the chances of that being maintained over time are so low that it's just an irrelevant argument. When someone says, well, you might be able to find that woman that you can actually have things work with over a long period of time, the chances of that are so low that unless that's the only thing that you feel like you can basically live for, and I don't say that to disparage these men, right? There are men that just... Their only identity that they can associate with is trying to be a husband and a father. I can understand that. That's not an envious position to be in, though. But aside from those men, why would you want to take that risk? Why would you sign up for that? Where there's a 90% plus chance that for all intents and purposes, the relationship's going to fail and you're going to pay the bulk of the price for that failure. And she's probably just going to move on with some other guy in monkey branch and not really have much in the way of negative consequences or have positive consequences because now she gets to get child support and spousal support. Now she gets to be more taken care of because of your efforts. It's just not worth it. And so my sort of conclusion or overall main point is that you can pretty much just ignore this. When someone says, oh, you can find the right woman or the right girl still out there, nine out of every 10 times, even if you put forth your best effort, it's not going to happen and it's going to have a negative outcome for you. Nine out of every 10 times. 
Maybe you could argue about the percentages. Maybe it's higher than that. But I think to be fairly generous or reasonable about it, the chance of actually having a so-called successful relationship is probably no better. It's probably no better than one out of 10, especially over time. And so I don't recommend taking that idea seriously. If you're red-pilled, so to speak, as a guy, if you're aware of where things really stand between men and women, do not enter into a committed relationship with a woman in any form. Don't take that risk of, well, I'm going to roll the dice anyway, and I'm going to go ahead and hope that I'm that one out of 10 at best guy that actually manages to stay in a relationship that even though I put in all this effort and we're going to have to get through all these hard times anyway, maybe at the end of the day, there's that one out of 10 chance that she doesn't cheat on me, doesn't divorce me, doesn't abuse me and so forth. Don't even put yourself in that position unless you literally can't find anything else that you can motivate yourself with. Do not step into that potential husband and father role today because there's no benefit and the chance of it failing is so high that it just doesn't really make sense to undertake that sort of challenge. It's ridiculous, really. You are better off putting your efforts into almost anything else that's positive that can have a much greater chance of a successful result for you in a positive way than you are trying to engage in the modern relationship dynamic and trying to be that guy that basically puts himself in that position and hopes that he's lucky enough to be that one out of 10 guy that actually manages to stay married, actually is in a marriage that's not totally miserable, and actually manages to get some sort of fulfillment. And even then, you're probably not going to have intimacy as often. You're probably going to have things that are negative about it. But that's one out of every 10 times. Their other nine completely fail in some form, even if they appear to be successful on the surface. So the point again of this video, the point of this topic being covered is to say that nine out of every 10 times it's going to fail. And unless you really want to take on those odds with the idea that it's almost certainly going to end badly for you, you're better off putting your efforts and energy into something else if you can possibly do so as a man in this environment today.